Welcome to Comanche 250 Simulator versus Real Life. I'm V from D and V Adventures. I'm a commercial rated pilot and part owner in a 1959 Comanche 250. Today we're going to compare real life performance of my Comanche 250 and power on and power off stalls compared to the performance in the A2A simulations. Uh, Comanche 250, considered one of the best available commercial add-on aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2000. To get started, let's talk a little bit about our experimental setup. We want to try and match as closely as possible the flight conditions uh, used in real life to measure stall performance as well as those in the simulator. Here we are in Garmin Pilot with our aircraft's weight and balance, assuming both passengers and of counting for fuel burn when we started the Sol series. So you can see uh, takeoff weight again is actually our start weight at, at the beginning of the Sol set of about 2,420 pounds. So what we want to do is match this. Uh, as closely as we can in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator as well, and I'll show you how to do that. Here we are in the A2A Comanche. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the tablet and go to Fuel Payload. We're going to add a right seat passenger. pounds. We're going to put five pounds in the baggage compartment. I tried to add five pounds in the rear seat, but it wouldn't let me go below 100 pounds, so I just turned that off. And we fill the tank, so uh, taking off with full fuel uh, and going uh, basically to the same practice area we used in the real flight will burn about the same amount of gas. So go ahead and clean up our takeoff checklist, trim set, fuel pumps on, all our lights are on. We're going to go ahead and take the runway here at 82 Juliet, Roscoe Field, departing northbound. This is a nice little airport, very close to Naval Air Station Pensacola in the home of the Blue Angels. Because of that, we have to level off very low, uh, below 700 feet as we get out of the surface area of the Class C airspace for Pensacola and the Naval Air Station. Then we can climb, uh, have to stay below 1,300 feet till we're either in radio contact with Pensacola Approach or outside of the outer Class C veil. As we climb towards 5,500 feet and turn southbound in a airspace clear area, let's talk about the setup for our stalls today. So for power on stalls, that's done in a clean configuration, gear up, flaps up. Um, and again, that uh, can be done at anywhere up to full power in an aircraft like the Comanche with 250 horsepower available, you usually don't want to do power on stalls using full power unless you really want to have your nose pointed really skyward. So instead we're going to use, uh, we're going to level off at 5,500 feet. Go ahead and let the aircraft settle out a little bit and throttle back to about 18 inches of manifold pressure. This will uh, still be a fair bit of power so we'll sort of see the difference in how a stall feels at something like cruise power at a higher altitude without needing to pull the nose quite so far up into the horizon. So here we are leveling off. It 
So you can see already accelerating past 150 miles an hour indicated. Now we throttle back to 18 inches manifold pressure. And we're just going to start raising the nose. First we'll just sort of raise the nose about 8 degrees, so a typical climb attitude. And again, we're not here to do acrobatics or to try and do what's called an accelerated stall, so we're trying not to have the aircraft under any uh, g-forces uh, when we stall. So starting to trim up and pull the nose a little higher, a little higher as we work our way. Uh, book stall speed at gross weight is 71 miles an hour. Now again we're going to see that um, we're actually going to stall a little slower than that. We'll talk about that why uh, here in a little bit. The command sheet does not have an audible stall warning horn. It just has a stall warning light. That's that little yellow light to the right of the artificial horizon. See that start to turn on right here at about 70 miles an hour in the simulator. There it is. Start to see that vibration, start to see the nose buck, and there at about 65 miles an hour indicated is the brake. So here we are in the real Comanche. Very similar setup. We're just over 5,500 feet, actually, in the same part of. Northwest Florida, 18 inches of manifold pressure set, clean, uh, just like before, pulling that nose up to about 10 degrees, letting the speed lead off. Uh, in our airplane, the stall warning light is actually just to the left of the airspeed indicator, and you'll see it's much less visible in daylight conditions than the simulator. In the real airplane, this is activated by a little vein on the left wing. So we get to about 72 miles an hour, starts to flash, and we get a break at about 66, 67. So what we see here is the A2A simulator Comanche and R59 real Comanche. Power on stall with the same power setting, very similar, Six, about 65 to versus 66, 67, or well within uh, normal margin error variation that you could simulate. So now we're going to switch over to the power off stall. So the power off stall approximates uh, a landing configuration. So we're going to have gear down, full flaps, and the throttle at idle for the power off stall. Here we switch back to the simulator. As we get to about 125 miles an hour, we're going to put the gear down. As the gear comes down, we can start going ahead and adding the flaps as well. And once again, throughout this process, there we power back, uh, power down to idle, and be adding lots and lots of nose up trim as we slow down. So you can see, because we're power off, that airspeed just trying to hold uh, altitudes already bleeding off very quickly. In the sim, we get the light at the same 70 miles an hour. And we get a hard break at very similar 65 miles an hour. Now, unlike the power on stall, we're going to see in the real airplane, the power off stall is uh, a little bit different. So once again, we're already set up, gear down, full flaps. I'm just going to ease that nose on back. You 
can see me running a lot of nose up trim again as the airplane slows down it gets very very nose heavy so there's uh, 72 where the stall warning came on previously again notice it's not blinking again in the real airplane the warning horn is an actual uh, sensor on the wing here it starts at about 62 miles an hour and not very far above the brake, right there at uh, 59.60, get a pretty hard brake and then a recovery. Let's enjoy some gratuitous uh, tail camera footage while we talked about um, what was very similar in the simulator versus very different and perhaps why that might be. All right, so here we have the power on stall numbers. Uh, got stall warning at 70 miles an hour versus 72 miles an hour. Uh, again, that's a Difference, it's not really a difference. Uh, stall brake, 65 and 67. Once again, uh, well within any sort of repeatable margin, uh, given, you know, simulator versus real life and differences, small differences in aerodynamics between airplanes, especially airplanes as old as uh, these Comanches. All these Comanches have various uh, different fairing mods, wing tips, a lot of uh, changes over the years are going to create small differences uh, between individual airplanes. So again, remarkably uh, close to the real thing. And again, A2A has done an amazing job with the Comanche overall at uh, making it feel very much and behave very much like the real airplane. Moving over to the power off stall, we saw a lot more difference. I wonder if this is uh, some type of limitation with the Microsoft Flight Sim flight models. So we saw the warning light uh, in the sim at the same speed as we saw for the power on stall. But again, in the real airplane, because it's uh, based on an actual stall sensor, um, and again, the in landing configuration with full flaps, the stall speed is lower, the stall warning itself comes on at a much lower airspeed, so almost 10 uh, miles an hour slower. Stall brake, similarly, in the simulator at 65 miles an hour was pretty much the same speed we saw with no flaps. And again, um, something doesn't seem to be right. I repeated this a couple different times off camera in the sim with consistent behavior, so uh, it wasn't a one-off. What we see again in the real airplane is a stall at 60 miles an hour with full flaps or about seven miles an hour slower than we got with the power on stall using 18 inches manifold pressure. So of course both the power on and power off stall speeds are lower than the 71 mile an hour clean and 64 mile an hour landing book speeds. So let's talk a little bit about why that is. So it's important to remember that the book speeds are based on aircraft gross weight. So depending on which model year in the Comanche 250, that's either going to be uh, 2,800 pounds, 3,000 pounds, or a little heavier than that if you have the tip tanks, although you'll have about the same useful load. Now remember, at the start of this, we uh, weighted both these airplanes at uh, between 2,400 and 2,450 pounds weight at the point of doing the stall exercises. So if we reference now the 2,400 uh, pound line, if we look at the zero flaps stall speed, uh, it's extrapolated to be about 63 miles an hour. So pretty close to the 65 we saw in the A2A simulated Comanche, a little bit lower than the 67 we saw in the real Comanche. Now 
You should also know uh, if this table is developed uh, power on at full power, you're going to get slightly slower speeds at full power than you will with the 18 inches. Once again, um, you know, these airplanes were really only certified measuring at gross weight. These charts assume a mathematical relationship between weight and stall speed, which is pretty close, but your mileage may vary depending on your individual aircraft, which is why going out and doing uh, exercises like this can be really helpful to understand your airplane in different weights and configurations. Now, if we go across the row at to the landing speed, full flap stall speeds, um, again, at 2,400 pounds, we expect uh, about 58 miles an hour. So here, very close to what we saw in the real airplane, at you know, 59 to 60 for our full flap power off stall brake, um, about six miles an hour slower than what we saw in the simulator, which seemed to just be mirroring, mirroring the uh, power on stall speed. So again, I'm curious to know if there's a limitation with Microsoft Flight Sim and the flight modeling and properly modeling uh, stall speeds between uh, the different flap settings or quite why that is. All in all, still again, great uh, work by A2A Simulations and their amazing Comanche add-on. Uh, the Comanche, whether you fly it in real life or in the sim, is a great four-place traveling airplane that has really stood the test of time. Uh, and um, hope you've learned something today. So uh, this is the first and what I hope to be a series of simulator versus uh, real Comanche. Uh, if you have other things you'd like compared, please uh, put them in the comments. Give me feed, you know, if you learned something today, please consider liking and subscribing and telling me what you might like to learn more about. Thank you very much and happy flying.